here again today with Aquarium Co-op or Aquarium Co-ops here today and now we're going to talk about rams, German blue rams, Mycogeophagus ramarisi, gold rams, and electric blue rams. Uh, rams have been one of my favorite fish for a hundred years. Okay, maybe not a hundred, but for a lot of years. And the reason is, is you pick up a German blue ram that's healthy uh, and you will see every color in the rainbow in that fish. And when they're displaying in breeding conditions, female with that beautiful pink belly and, uh, and the feisty black, the black gets darker. Uh, it is just an intensely colored fish. Kind of reminds you almost sometimes of some of our marine fish that we see that are so colorful. What does it take exactly to uh, successfully keep rams? Uh, they're, they're said to be one of the tougher fish in the industry. Um, and that's because a lot of people completely understand the care that they need. Rams need a little bit higher temperature than most tropical fish. I keep mine uh, best at 86 degrees. Some people even go higher than that, 88. Uh, when I'm breeding them, I'll breed them at 86, raise the fry between 84, 86. Uh, I do like to bring that temperature down. We've talked about that in another video that you'll be able to find on the channel. Um, you know, how we breed the rams and how we bring the temperature down before they go to a store. The reason that is done is so that they're better off for you to buy because if they've gone just from 86 right to the store at 82 or 80 or 78, uh, they're not going to do as well. To keep them in a normal tank, and they're great fish in a community tank with just about any other fish. They will go with tetras, rainbows, corridors, catfish, plecos, discus, angelfish, other dwarf cichlids like epistos, public acromas, all of that they'll do fine with. They might pick a little bit on some of the uh, fish like the guppies and stuff like that because they're a little bit more aggressive. But, but generally speaking, they're a fairly peaceful fish. So when you're looking at buying rams, um, pick a store that you like, look at the rams in the store, uh, make sure they are not thin and wasted away. That is gonna be a failure for sure. And yeah, a lot of times we want to buy a fish and we're going to nurse that back and we're going to have this great... That does not work with rams. You want to buy a fish that's robust, active, and not wasted away, especially a hollow belly, because they almost never come back from that fully. We might not even know why or what. That's not really important. It's better to start off with a healthy fish. You could ask the store, are you buying from a local breeder? Uh, are you buying... Uh, imported rams or are you buying uh, you know, domestic ones? It makes a big difference on how these rams were raised before you got them and maybe even before the store got them. So uh, maybe watch them being fed in the store, uh, maybe more than once, you know. Um, you want fish that are actively chasing that food, maybe sparring with each other, especially uh, over maybe a potential spawning spot. Rams will spawn when they're one inch long, they will start spawning and start sparring. So you start with that, you're gonna have a lot better success. So basically you have three sources of rams. There's the locally bred rams, which are from a local breeder, uh, whether he sells directly to you or through a store, you know they're bred in your water or in your local water. Uh, there's domestic rams, which are you know usually farmed generally in Florida. And then there's the imported rams. Uh, and they all have their merits. Uh, a lot of people would see the imported rams as having longer fins and brighter colors, but be careful with those because a lot of that is because of the use of hormones as they're as they're um, as they're grown out and and it's artificial and it could affect their their longevity in the tank. Domestic rams are a little bit better, um, but um, you know from a store point of view, it's it's easier for them to buy imported rams because they're imported by the thousands and locally bred rams are probably the least brought into stores and you also have the opportunity if you choose to of looking online for sources but again i find that the best the best ones you can buy 
um, are rams that are from a breeder themselves, one way or the other, whether it's through your store, locally, whether it's online. Um, I tend to avoid the um, imported ones, mainly because of that. When you take these home, you know, community tank works, tank of their own works. I wouldn't put them in with super large fish like, say, Oscars, uh, but any other fish that, you know, can tolerate the temperatures that ram need. And that's the one thing to remember again is they need that higher temperature. So if you're going to do a planted tank, I would definitely find plants that work in higher temperature tanks. Give them good substrate, you know, so that the, because uh, the rams will dig into that substrate a little bit. Give them uh, some good spots to hide. Even if you're doing a bear tank, which all my tanks are bare, that's just my personal preference. I'm not really a plant guy, so I can't really argue with that. You want the rams to have a place where they can hide or kind of get out of the line of sight from each other. All that does is help them, you know, kind of rest, maybe maybe the right word would be, they get to rest their egos for a little bit. pH-wise, they're fairly adaptable. I've kept them in as low as five. I've kept them up to, you know, eight, eight, three, eight, four, anywhere in there. My tap water typically comes out a little bit above eight, and I keep them in my tap water. It's very soft. They will do better in softer water, but they can be adapted to harder water, but I would not, um, I, I wouldn't expect them to thrive in harder water. If you're in an area where the water's harder and you can, can, you can get the pH down, um, I don't know whether I would go with a water softener because that's going to add sodium to the water. You could dilute your water with some RO water, some rain water, or adding things like um, Indian almond leaves will help soften that water make it more adaptable to, to the rams. They're not objectionable to having leaves or wood in the water. Uh, Growth-wise, um, they're going to get to be two, two and a half inches. Uh, they will live quite a long time if taken well care of. Odds are, even in a community tank, uh, if you have a pair, uh, you will end up with them spawning somewhere in that tank. Generally, it's in a secluded corner where they can protect their spawn but it could be on a leaf, on a rock, it could be just on the bare bottom or a corner uh, in a flower pot. They're not really that picky about that as long as they can protect that spot. Food-wise, um, I can feed them just about any of the um, processed foods in the store. Whether it be flakes, uh, they like that. Uh, freeze-dried blood worms, freeze-dried tube effects worms are a big hit. In fact, if you can um, fabricate uh, a worm feeder, a cube will work or stick it on the side of the tank, that works really well too. Any of the frozen foods like frozen brine shrimp, cyclops, uh, blood worms, mysis shrimp to some degree if they're larger rams, uh, all of those are great uh, supplemental foods. Uh, I would not try to get them on a diet of all frozen foods if you want to feed some dry foods in there also because you will end up spoiling it. And once that ram is spoiled, it's not gonna go back to the dry foods. I like to feed them twice a day, not just once a day. However, um, when they're fully grown, once a day is fine, but as they're growing, twice a day is better, I think, helps, helps with the growth. There's lots of varieties. There's, there's long thin rams, regular thin rams. You know, they're, obviously they're all German blue rams. I've said this before, German Blue Rams are not from Germany. That's a name that's put on them as a trade name. Whether you've got gold ones, electric blue, or German blue, the care is all the same in terms of how you keep them. Water changes are important to them. They like fresh water. I typically, at home, in my fish room, uh, give them partial water change twice a week. You don't really have to do that uh, in, in yours. You can probably get away with a weekly water change. I would not stretch it too much longer than that because they do like their clean fresh water and they do not tolerate um, you know, ammonia and other toxins in the water that will be the number one thing that will put them uh, on the sick bed so to speak and possibly kill them so keep them with good fresh water uh, lots of good food 
and you know, enjoy your Rams. So we will see you next time where we talk about something else that we don't know about yet.